Good morning, and welcome to City Watch on WBAI 99.5 FM, here to start your day with news and insight about New York and the world around us. I'm your host, Jeff Simmons. This lovely weekend, if you have not stepped outside yet, it's beautiful weather here in New York City. A bit brisk, but frankly, it's a great day to get out and enjoy yourself. Each week on City Watch, we bring you perspective from those who shape our city, the elected officials and the policymakers, but also the experts, advocates, authors, entertainers. I was at an event last night where I was asked about how we book our show, our guests on this show or really on uh, any of the shows on WBAI. Uh, I also host a show on Thursdays called Driving Forces, where we delve into politics on a city, state and national level. I said that it's often because of what's in the news that week. Sometimes it's often based on a guest's availability or their interest. We have a lot of potential guests that we pursue that just their press reps or they don't get back. We still aggressively pursue them. And, but often it's because I've read a story or I've watched a press conference and I want to know more about a topic and I hope you want to know more about that topic too. I mean, that's why a few days ago we had Mayor Eric Adams here on WBAI and he discussed combating crime given the surge of criminal incidents in our city this year compared with last year. And that continues to be a topic of serious concern, one that on future episodes of City Watch or Driving Forces, we will keep discussing. In fact, on that show just uh, this past Thursday, uh, you know, we we had talked about how the mayor was planning to meet with top uh, police brass this weekend, which he did yesterday, to discuss crime fighting, to ask them for ideas on how we can combat this surge in crime. So yesterday, the mayor went to a precinct in Brooklyn, met with a number of police uh, brass, police, uh, police officials. And then uh, issued a few comments saying that, uh, he, you know, we need to get back to basics. Now, what that looks like isn't really clear, but that could mean, from what I read this morning in the papers, that could mean resuming heavier ticketing of people for low-level level offenses and issuing more summonses for things like jumping turnstiles. The mayor said he'd also look at, this is interesting, how cops are deployed. I'm curious how that would pan out and whether... Police officers in administrative jobs need to be somehow redeployed in the streets. So I want to come back to this topic of addressing crime and exploring solutions on another show. It's something that is going to continue. And possibly one area I, I am interested in, and I'm curious if you are too, is about the Cure Violence Program. These are the types. Some jurisdictions, some they have not, but this has been uh, an, uh, uh, something that the mayor has talked about here. These are credible messengers uh, who are out in communities. They share their life experiences to hopefully influence others not to follow in their footsteps and not to commit crimes. But I also want you, our listeners, to know that we listen to you. We hear from you, and this is what also generates a number of these ideas for topics on these shows. So I thank you, those of you who have had a direct contact with me or my co-host David Brand or my co-host on Driving Forces, Celeste Katz-Marston, who've messaged us. And I encourage you to do that because I'm always looking for interesting topics to focus on. Often, a lot of times, it's about legislation that's moving forward or might be stalled, but I want you to know more about that. So let me just give you my information before I continue. You can direct message me on Twitter at Jack Heights. That's kind of my spin on where I live, Jackson Heights. It's J-A-C-K-H-I-T-E-S. Or you can email me at my WBAI email address. It's easy. It's Jeff, my name, at WBAI.org. And it's because of your engagement, because you have reached out to us. Sometimes people have called into the show and brought up these topics, but other times you've messaged me. That's why we've discussed issues more deeply about health care, such as we did a special episode on the New York Health Care Act, for instance. We focused on more issues involving the environment and climate change. And it's also why we've then reached out to certain elected officials, whether they're local, you know, your local council members, uh, state senators or assembly members, and sometimes national figures. I mean, Senator Bob Menendez's office, we were, uh, suggested we should reach out to him. They're trying to book him on driving forces with us. So hopefully that'll happen in a few weeks. So please keep those ideas coming. My email, once again, is jeff at WBAI.org. This week, I'm returning... 
I'm returning to a topic I focused on a while ago, animal rights. And part of this is selfish on my part. I've got two dogs. They're right near me right now. So if you hear them whining or barking or snoring, you know, it just adds a little more flavor to this, this show. But they mean the world to me. And I'm always horrified. I'm mortified when I see examples of animal cruelty. This was on my mind last night when I passed by Central Park and watched the carriage horses. I could not help but think about an audit we did when I used to work at the New York City Controller's Office that exposed poor treatment of the horses. And I really do struggle when I come across stories in the newspapers or spots on the TV news about incidents of animal cruelty. I cannot get over how people treat defenseless animals. And yes, in this episode today, I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve. There's only a few weeks left in the state legislative session, and there's a measure I've been interested in returning to for some time, inhumane treatment of animals bred for profit. I'm talking about puppy mills, high-volume dog breeding facilities that basically have churned out animals that are often sick and unsocialized, and they commonly sell through internet sales, online classified ads, flea markets, pet stores. And in fact, most of the puppies you see in pet stores and online are from puppy mills. So... That brings me to my first guest, Senator Michael Gennaris. The senator serves as Deputy Majority Leader and represents Western Queens. He's been a progressive champion for tenants' rights, better subways, election reforms, a fairer criminal justice system, LGBTQ plus equality, and ending unfair economic development policies. So there's been a lot going on in Albany lately, and we're going to discuss some of that today. But I want to get back to this issue that I'm just talking about now, because the last time we focused on animal rights issues here on WBAI, we got a great amount of feedback. We heard from you. So I invited the senator on to discuss the legislation which he sponsored in the Senate, and Linda Rosenthal, who we've also had on the show before, sponsored this in the Assembly. And then afterwards, I'll be joined by Ali Feldman-Taylor of Voters for Animal Rights and Bill Ketzer from the ASPCA to discuss the measure further. Senator Gennaris, welcome to City Watch. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you for having me. First of all, I do want to ask you, uh, you know, I saw that you had noted this the other day on social media. Uh, many of us have tested positive in this in this period uh, with COVID. How are you feeling these days? I appreciate the question. I was actually going to say if I sound a little like, off, that's the sort of, uh, average cough in this interview. I apologize in advance, but I'm doing okay. I've got some mild symptoms, a little bit still testing positive, so I'm isolated at home for now. So I'm sorry you're going through that. It's uh, I will say it was an exhausting two weeks for me. I was glad on my on a personal level, I was glad I had been t- uh, had my shots vaccinated and got boosted. But still, you know, the symptoms are very exhausting. So I understand if you're going to cough. I I did this show also when I had COVID and it was a struggle at points. Um, I briefly talked about the legislation that you've proposed to uh, shut down the puppy mill pipeline. You've you've tried this in earlier sessions. And last year it was approved by the Senate. Why hasn't it gone further? Well, there's a fair amount of education that needs to happen on this issue. Even in the Senate, uh, we had to spend a fair amount of time uh, explaining to people why the cute puppies they see in the windows um, are uh, are actually a problem. Uh, You know, most people are walking down the street, sometimes with their kids, and they see uh, these cute animals dancing around in the window. And what could be wrong with that? It's the cutest thing on earth. But you have to really dig into it. Um, take a look at where they come from, how they're bred, and you see the problem pretty quickly. <clears throat> One of the issues is that these stores hide behind um, the fact that they're getting them from quote-unquote licensed breeders, which doesn't mean very much. Uh, they're federally licensed breeders all across the country, but the enforcement of their um, operations is virtually non-existent. Uh, and so they could be licensed, but if no one's looking at what they're doing, the abuses are rampant, and we've seen this time and time again throughout the country. Bad for the animals, obviously, but also bad for the people that purchase them. Uh, we're, we're dealing with an incident as we speak with the store on Long Island, Shake a which was shut down by the Attorney General's office in terms of its ability to sell animals, and uh, was reopened after some court proceedings. And sure enough, someone's complaining that they got an animal from there and it's been very sick, costing them thousands of dollars in veterinary um, bills. And uh, these are the problems that occur when. Uh, animals are just being bred as products um, and not being adopted or rescued, um, which, by the way, there are thousands of animals, really good animals, who are in need of, of rescue and adoption. We don't even need to go down this road. 
So if this passes, it would make this state, New York, uh, the sixth state in the nation to target the, the puppy mill pipeline. What would this measure do if it becomes law in New York State? Well, it's a pretty simple approach. It would just prohibit the sale for profit of um, dogs, cats, and rabbits uh, at retail. Um, people can still, if they want a particular breed or want to deal with a breeder, they can still go uh, deal directly with the responsible breeder where they can see the conditions for themselves. But the problem is when stores are selling these animals uh, and doing it uh, as if they're selling uh, dog and cat food, they're treating it like commodities, uh, the interest of the animal does not come first. Uh, and then they don't care where they're getting them from. They get them from these breeders, uh, usually from out of state. Uh, and the conditions at those uh, breeding facilities are horrible because they're not concerned with the well-being of the animal. They're concerned with churning out as much product, quote-unquote, as they can to increase their profit margin. Uh, and that's where the problem comes in. I mentioned this on Long Island uh, a little while ago. The, the, when you see the response to the criticism, it's clear that they don't even get it. Uh, and in response to this notion that they sold a sick dog, they said, well, we're happy to exchange that dog for another one. That is not how we should treat living beings. Oh, you don't like this dog? It's sick. Something was wrong with how it was bred? Bring it back. We'll trade it out for a new model. I mean, that is not how this is supposed to work. We can't treat these animals like they're cans of soup on the store shelf. Uh, and if you don't like it, bring it back and get another one. Um, these are things with feelings. These are uh, living beings that uh, have emotions. And to treat them this way is just not the way as a society we should be operating. So one of the stories that I had, uh, read in the last few days had, uh, you know, I had balanced it out by uh, talking with some uh, pet store owners. Uh, one, it indicated it's uh, misdirected, paints a le uh, misleading viewpoint of pet stores. Uh, you know, how do you respond to the criticism from some of the resistance to this and where it's coming from? Well, this is the education I mentioned. I heard that from my own colleagues because uh, at first blush, they're like, oh, well, here's what seems to be a reputable store. And even with the lax enforcement I mentioned, um, uh, you can find gross violations at these places uh, all around the country, which is the supply, where the supply comes from. When my colleagues would approach me with that exact criticism, I would say to them, tell me which, which store you're worried about. And they would tell me the store, and I would look it up and find all sorts of horrible um, violations uh, from the suppliers of these stores. Uh, in some cases, uh, dogs uh, sitting in cages in their own feces, all sorts of diseases, uh, in, some, uh, in some instances where a um, female is no longer able to breed, they would just take them and shoot them, uh, execute them summarily because they weren't providing any value anymore to these breeders. Uh, there is not a single store that sells animals at retail that is not corrupted by where the supply of animals is coming from. Uh, and in response, I would say, give me the name of a retail store, I will find you gross violations that people would be aghast at. Um, coming from the the places that supply them. So talk a little about who uh, who's backing this measure. There are a number of organizations. I think our listeners would find this of interest. Of who's supporting this? Yeah, we've got great support uh, from so many groups. I think you mentioned a couple of them will be on your show uh, after me. Um, so I, I know the the great folks from Voters for Animal Rights and Bill Bill Katzer, ASPCA is a uh, is a friend who's worked so hard on this. There's uh, uh, Libby Post, who uh, works for the Animal Protection uh, Federation in Albany. Uh, there's not a, an animal rights group uh, that's uh, out there right now that is not leaning into this and, and being supportive. And it's taken hold throughout the animal rights community, I should mention. There's um, there is a, uh, a community of uh, Instagram famous uh, animals, uh, if you will, that a lot of people probably follow. Uh, unfortunately, one of them just uh, surprisingly passed uh, a couple of nights ago, but um, uh, Ella Bean was the name of the dog. And uh, Ella Bean's mom, so to speak, a human mom, um, has made it a cause to raise awareness on this bill um, in the name of, of Ella Bean. And, uh, so it's, it's taken hold throughout the uh, animal rights community, advocacy groups, individuals, and yes, the, the celebrity uh, dogs and cats as well. Uh, because we really just need to get the uh, uh, assembly there with us in the Senate. I think the Senate is poised to move the bill again, as we did last year. Uh, hopefully we get the assembly to join us and get this done finally. Any indication from the governor where she stands on this? 
Uh, I don't. And the governor, as, as you well know, Jeff, has her hands full. She's only been there a few months <laughs> and has uh, been dealing with a lot of issues. Uh, I certainly intend to bring this to her attention when the time is right. So uh, you mentioned that I'm going to just then segue into uh, another topic uh, that she does have her hands full because we have uh, ele- we're in election season right now. It's a little unclear when we're going to have all or some of the primaries. I know not everything is set in stone right now. Um, what's be I've been following over this past week have been the fast moving developments regarding uh, the district maps that were drawn up. So. As of now, if I have this correct, the state Senate primaries are moved to late August, um, but there's also expected litigation to move the assembly primaries there, too. Can you let our listeners know where things stand and and what your reaction has been about all of these developments in the last week? Sure, and it's an evolving situation, as you mentioned. Uh, As of right now, the state Senate and the congressional primaries are both on August 23rd. Uh, The assembly uh, lines are being challenged, according to news reports, Tomorrow, uh, the expectation is they will also get pushed to August 23rd. New lines have to be uh, drawn over the course of this month, and then we're in May. Uh, May 20th is the current deadline for the maps to be finalized by a, uh, uh, a special expert that the court has appointed. It's a bit of a mess. Uh, it shouldn't be, but this is where the Court of Appeals has, uh, has uh, made its decision, and so we have to live with it. Um, and we're doing the best we can to not confuse voters with multiple elections. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with a situation where voters were already notified of what their lines, the districts were, when the elections were, and all that has changed. So we have to spend a fair amount of time re-educating people about uh, all these changes. So I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, but uh, stay tuned is what I would say. But as of right now, we'll know our districts on May 20th, and the primaries for Senate and Congress are August 23rd. It's possible the Assembly also gets moved to August. I mean, and were you surprised by the Court of Appeals decision? I know that it was a split des- decision. It was very close. The deciding vote was Judge Madeline Singus, if I pronounced that correctly. Um, were you surprised that the votes went that way? Well, I, I, I can tell you how, how wrong I think they were, but they are the ones that get to decide under our system. And so I, I don't agree with the decision, but I abide by it because I, I respect our system. Um, and here we are. I think uh, it, uh, even... Even Republican judges leading up to the Court of Appeals had uh, had found uh, differently in parts, um, as it relates to the Senate lines in particular. Uh, but like I said, the, the way our system works, I don't like everything the U.S. Supreme Court does. I don't like everything our Court of Appeals does, but that's uh, that's the law right now, and so we're we're operating under what they have given us. So I know we only have a few minutes left, and you only have a few more weeks left in this legislative session. What else is on tap? What other key pieces of legislation do you want to see move forward before the session ends? Well, I certainly want to see the puppy mill bill go, which we already discussed. Um, but uh, there are a number of important issues we're dealing with. Uh, I would love to see something happen on uh, good cause protection for, for tenants so they aren't uh, evicted without reason. Um, that uh, we have to deal with uh, issues that are uh, forced, that we're forced to deal with, as in New York City in particular. Mayoral control of the schools is expiring, as is the affordable housing subsidy, the so-called affordable housing subsidy program for 21A. We're going to have to decide one way or the other uh, on those on those uh, substantive issues. Um, I have a bill that would revolutionize the way we tackle antitrust laws uh, in this state, which would have a national impact that I'm hoping to uh, to see move in the next month. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done, no shortage of issues to, to grapple with. And Senator Gennaris, if our listeners would like to learn more about you, and if they want to learn more about this piece of legislation that we discussed today, where should they go? Before I do that, let me just say there's one important issue I left uh, out of my list, uh, and that is dealing with the climate crisis. We have a bill we're trying to get across the finish line called the Build Public Renewables Act, which would move um, uh, the public back into a decision-making posture as it relates to uh, renewable energy in this state. We're, we're trying to get that done so that the state can accelerate the uh, the shift away from fossil fuels. Um, the uh, way to contact me is uh, through uh, the Senate office. That's GNRS at nysenate.gov. Uh, our staff is very attentive and very active in the community. We're always happy to, to respond to folks and get out there. Of course, I'm 
uh, all over social media as well. It's at SCN Gianaris or at Send Gianaris. Um, and uh, a lot of people already are active in those spaces as well, but uh, we always are looking for more to communicate with. Senator Gennaris, I want to thank you for joining me here on WBAI this morning, and I also want to wish you a speedy recovery. Thanks so much, Jeff. Appreciate it.